So I know what you're thinking. How do millionaires really do it? How do the rich continue to get richer? How do they see things and what are their secrets? Well, because I want you to win and never worry about money ever again. I'm gonna share with you those secrets and how millionaires make their money in this episode of The Seven Figures What Happening. Three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace. Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And as you can see from behind me here on a Monday night, people are feeling more confident in coming back out of their homes, getting out of quarantine, getting out of lockdown, and coming back to the office to operate their businesses. Once again, in the office, obviously everybody's socially distant, got their masks up, sanitized tables, but it's okay. We are making it work, opening up our offices once again. With that being said, just last week, we did a workshop, our first ever live public workshop since the lockdown, and we went all the way down to the South Shore of Chicago. Why? Because we're doing our part to not only provide financial education, but also entrepreneurial education to those communities that are overlooked and underserved. So in this episode, you're going to get a unique look at a hybrid workshop that we did. There was a mixture of both people there live and in person, and also online via Zoom. In this live workshop, I'll break down how 90% of everybody in America make their money and how the millionaires do it differently. Without further ado, bust out your notebooks and let's jump right into it. Let's check this out. So when, when we're looking at how to make money in our country, like let's, let's go back to the Kiyos, uh, Robert Kiyosaki. How many guys have ever read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yes, awesome. So <clears throat> the first way to make money in our country is, E stands for? Employee. employee. You're working for somebody, okay? You fill out a W-2, right? Uh, you're clocking in, clocking out. You're required to be there. What happened last year to most everybody in this category? Down the drain. Down the drain. They got exposed. Okay? I'm, by the way, I'm not saying this. The numbers are saying the country said this. What about those that uh, worked in this category? What I stands for? Uh, excuse me. Uh, S stands for? Self-employed. Self-employed. You're working for somebody. A 1099. And this is where a lot of our country's coming to. It's called the gig economy. Have you heard that gig? Like you musician, I got a gig tonight. I got a job. In other words, I got a job tonight, right? Artists, I got a gig. Independent contractors, I got a gig. But once the gig is done, the, the paycheck stops. So uh, uh, this helps out for those who are work from home. You know, WFH, right? Work from home type folks. They got a gig. You know, how many guys, uh, for the very first time, you guys actually started busting out pants for the very first time? <laughs> for the whole entire year, right? You know, usually it looks like this up top, but uh, basketball shorts on the bottom, if you're lucky to get that. Flip flops, okay? And so, so you're either working for somebody or what? You're working for yourself as a self-employed. Doctors are here. Uh, uh, lawyers are here. Dentists are here. Okay? Uh, uh, engineers are here. They run their own engineering firm. Accountants are here. They work for their own accounting firm. Very smart people are here. So uh, I slid in here because when I left the military, I slid into the self-employed game selling life insurance. Okay. What did I do to sell life insurance? I bought leads. I, uh, I, I did dinner seminars. Okay. I did mailers, uh, marketing. I did uh, radio. I did um, um, uh, magazine uh, ads, uh, newspaper ads. I just dated myself. How, who, who here today reads a newspaper? <laughs> right? But uh, Chicago Sun-Times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, funny thing, uh, newspaper ads, uh, three, three inches by four inches. Okay. Uh, how, 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 how much money do you think that is per day? I'm just kidding. For you, if, if let's say you have, you have a, a normal business, 50. right? How much? 50 bucks. 50 bucks in a Chicago Sun Times. Yep. A day. A day. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. 500. Keep going. 1,500. Wow. 1,500 a day. To put a three by five ad to, hey, pay attention to me. I sell life insurance. I have an idea to help you with your money. Come to my dinner seminar, and if you come out, I'll feed you. $1,500 a day. That's what I used to do. Uh, when I was in the insurance industry, I was at 130, 140% contract. Okay? And, and usually salespeople care about how much your contract level is because all they care about is when a transaction happens, how much money am I going to make? That's the way salespeople think. Fair enough. But with that being said, this is where 90% of America are at, 
right? And is 90% of America financially free and financially independent? Okay, uh, I think that the, the number is 71, 76 million people still file for unemployment. So the people till, till, to this day are still looking for some assistance because they got stuck here, right? 90% of, oh, this is a nice, this is a nice tip. I, I want to damage this one, okay? <laughs> oh, I used the green one. That's a nice tip too as well, right? I'll use, yeah, use, use the fatties, thank you, all right? Oh, I'll, use, I'll use the pink. So 90% of people here, all right, are broke. And just because you make six figures, how many of y'all would just love to make six figures? Yeah. That'd be kind of cool, right? One out of 10 people, here's a fact. One out of 10 people making six figures are still living paycheck to paycheck. And that's sad. You know, we just did on Saturday, um, we did a search for college degrees most likely to help you make a lot of money coming out of school. Okay, we searched uh, college degrees, highest paying jobs. College degrees that pay them the, the biggest jobs, right? What do we find? Engineer, 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 scientist, engineer, engineer, engineer. Here's a problem with that. I suck at math and science. No Asian jokes, please. Okay? Okay? Yeah, you're laughing because you know it's true. I'm sitting next to you. I was, I was that Asian kid you don't want to sit next to. I'm like, I screwed everything up. <laughs> Coffee, come out here. Okay? So I was a kid that you uh, went to lunch with. I was a kid that you, play, you, you, you picked first round draft pick at gym. You picked me, you picked me. Picking basketball team, you better pick me. That was, that was me, okay? Math, mm -mm, right? So I broke all stereotypes when it came to that. So if you wanted to get the least paying job coming out of college, guess what you study? Education, social services. <laughs> at least 30, 40, 50,000 in your jobs. And by the way, the highest paying job as an engineer starts, at, uh, starts off at 80. Sounds, sounds pretty good, right? You start at 80,000, but here's the downside to having a college degree these days, which is what? Student loan debt. Student loan debt. I mean, uh, we just passed up a couple of colleges, right? On, on the drive-in, we passed up University of Chicago. What's down here? Chicago State, Cougars down here. Uh, you, you, uh, Northwest, North Side, uh, Evanston. Right, by the way, uh, Ev did you hear about uh, Evanston in the uh, black community? the first township in the United States of America to start paying reparations to the black community. Yeah, Evanston. You know, everybody said Evanston are black? It's not enough. Back here, back here. Good start though. Thanks Evanston, maybe it's a ripple effect. Who, who knows? Okay, what's the other side of the quadrant? B, business owner. I got my own business. What's your own business? How, how, how many times go, uh, you come across somebody and on their social media profile they say entrepreneur? Business owner, okay? Here's a true test of a business owner. If the person leaves the business for a day, for a week, for a month, for six months, does that business still make money? If not, then guess what? They're back here. They're self-employed. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote this book, The Rich Dad, Poor Dad, who wrote The Cash Flow Quadrant, he says, you need 500 plus employees, brand ambassadors, independent contracts, to call yourself a business owner. And it's ran by a system and a process, right? In the military, we call that standard operating procedures, right? The business and the system is running your business, not the most talented person in the business. Does that make sense? So for example, if I'm a, if I'm a lawyer and I don't show for my clients in court, do I collect billable hours as a lawyer for my clients? No, if I'm, if I'm, a, if I'm a dentist or a doctor, if I'm not at my practice, uh, I'll see my patients and working on tufuses, <laughs> right? Do I, do, I make, do I make money at the, at the dental practice? But that's, that's a key term, practice. You know what you're practicing? How to own a business, <laughs> right? That's it, and by the way, I was there for 14 years selling life insurance. I had an insurance practice, okay? So what started changing my life, how it took a 500 bucks and started creating, uh, by the way, this 500 bucks, I, I flipped this into these $1,500 ads. These $1,500 ads, maybe $15,000 a seminar, $20,000 a seminar. So you saw I flipped $1,500, okay? And I started flipping $10,000 into $50,000 a month. And I started taking $15,000 flips and making $60,000, $80,000 income months by selling more what? Insurance. So that was my game. But the moment I didn't take that $10,000 or $5,000 or $15,000 budget to, to buy ads, to flip it, 
guess how much money I'd make? Zero. That's, that's why all these folks here, I, 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 I see a lot, of, as we were, we're laughing because Johanna was uh, pulling up my YouTube channel. It's funny how many people advertise on my channel. <laughs> uh, who that? They're advertising on my channel? Really? By the way, I have a competitor, I know this on Facebook Live, I have a competitor <laughs> who advertised on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you for, for honoring me. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'll take your money. <laughs> They ever tell you, like, I have a direct, you think that hers? A direct competitor of ours advertising my YouTube channel. Okay, I'll take your 50 bucks. So knock yourself out. <laughs> we'll create more videos for you to advertise on. <laughs> By the way, uh, what does that say? You know, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Thank you. Thank you for flattering me. Right? Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> By the way, notice I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wigged out. Why? Because I don't work in a scarcity mentality. I work in an abundance mentality. Okay, back to business owner. Back to business owner. I don't care if you're white, black, brown, red, purple, right? Asian, um, Hispanic, Latino, Christian, Jewish, and atheist, agnostic, I don't care. All I care about is, do you care about green? <laughs> and do you care about humans? That's my system, okay. But back to, the, back to the business owner, right? Do we have a problem that needs to be solved? Here's, here's, here's the thing with finance. Let me guys ask you this question. Comes to this community. I've been driving down here just observing. Is there a difference of businesses on the south side of Chicago versus businesses on the north side of Chicago? Okay, do you know why? Because the, the aldermen, right, in the certain districts are better recruiters are better policy makers. Think about that. Think about this real quick, in a macro sense, state sense. Who's a good recruiter right now? What state is a very, very good recruiter right now? Florida. Florida is a very good, Florida. Texas is a very good one. Is, is California a very good recruiter? No, no, no. Terrible. If you make, by the way, who would love to make a million bucks? Everybody. Okay, in California, it's the worst state to make a million bucks. Because not only do you have federal tax, but you, make thir you pay 13.1% income tax yeah. in the state of California. Here in Illinois, it's at least 5% flat tax. What did, what did uh, Pritzker try to do during the elections? He tried to shove it in a progressive income tax, right? $53 million of Governor Pritzker's own money, because he made his money because his parents, his parents, his parents were business owners. Think about that real quick. The governor today, Governor Prisker is a son, uh, he's a 55th, 53rd richest man in the world. Why? Because his parents were not employees. They were not smart, just self-employed people. That they were business owners. It was funny, I was, I was giving uh, him a hard time. I said he was holding a rally at the Hilton. Uh, what the heck are you holding? Do you, do you know why that's funny, right? Because the Prisker family owns the Hyatts. <laughs> and the Hilton family owns the Hiltons. So why are you holding your rally at the competitors. He, he owns uh, the Royal Caribbean uh, Cruise Lines. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a Pritzker family, right? So he, they, their, their family found a problem that they solved and continue to solve. And today, he's, he's, uh, he's uh, living off old money. Anyway, Pritzker tried putting $53 million of his own money to try to have a progressive income tax in the state of Illinois. So the more money you made, the more money you get taxed. Okay, the, his biggest donor to that campaign was 1,500 bucks. <laughs> so you can tell nobody really believed in progressive income tax. Anyway, what did Illinois voters say on election night? Uh, uh, it's not going through. But back to the business owner. So if you have a business, it makes money with or without you, with or without you, without you. So when this, when this happens, you start creating money, you start printing money, you start printing money, you start printing money. And then eventually you have to put that money somewhere, which helps you slide into this category, which is being an investor. How many, how many guys have heard of Uncle Nearest Whiskey? Okay, my team has heard it. Um, how many guys have heard of Jack Daniels? Okay, yeah, of course, Jack and Coke. You just had one right before you got here. <laughs> Long drive from Indiana. So uh, Jack Daniels, Jack Daniels, American icon, right? So coming to find, I was introduced to uh, Fawn Weaver. Fawn Weaver is an investigative journalist. She went to go investigate a story that Jack Daniels wasn't the actual distiller of 
Jack Daniels whiskey, it was his emancipated slave, nearest green. Okay? Checks it out, checks it out, checks it out. Goes to county records, old county pictures, town hall pictures. Guess who's standing next to Jack Daniels? Not behind him, but next to him. Nearest green. Uh, company picture, Jack Daniels. Guess who's standing next to him? Not behind him. Nearest green. Okay. She goes, wait a minute. How come you guys didn't give credit and honor to Nearest Green, who was an emancipated slave, for being the creator and distiller of Jack Daniels whiskey? And he took his African whiskey making process with the Tennessee River from Lynchburg, Tennessee, and made Jack Daniels. How come you didn't give him credit? Well, the Civil War just ended. 13th Amendment just got passed. Bad optics. Who would have bought the whiskey if an emancipated slave made it? Bad optics. Anyway, fast forward four years ago, the story was exposed. And guess what Jack Daniels finally did? Yes, he helped us create. Give honor to Nearest Green. And guess what Jack Daniels did? Smithsonian Institution, whoosh, removed the old uh, story and inserted into the company story of Jack Daniels, Uncle Nearest Green's name. Guess what he did at the distillery, Jack Daniels? Now they're giving honor and credit to Nearest Green's family. So, Fun Weaver goes back, the investigative journalist who goes back and says, who does she still find, at, who does she still find working at? The distillery of Jack Daniels, who you should find? The descendants of Nearest Green. Okay? So we said, what do you guys want to do? They admitted to it. What do you guys want? My husband's an attorney. <laughs> no, it's okay. They've taken care of us. They've taken care of us. However, great, great, great granddaddy, great, 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 great uncle, Nearest, had some recipes he would have loved to make. Really? What is that? Oh, wow, wow, wow. So what do I want to do? Well, we want to create a company. So Fon Weaver puts together a company. Later on, we come along, we invest into the company from being a business owner. We invest in this company called Uncle Nearest Green. And guess what? It's the fastest growing whiskey company in the history of America. It's in 31 different countries. It's the only board, whiskey liquor board, or a board of directors, that has a multicultural board. And it's the only uh, liquor company in America, whiskey, vodka, tequila, whatever you want to call it. Um, for example, some of you guys like Patron? <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> Who makes Patron? The hair guy. Paul Mitchell, right? What about uh, Casamigos Tequila? Who makes that? George Clooney. How about Sincoro? Who makes that? Uh, uh, Michael Jordan. So all these, all these stars are making liquor. Okay? So Uncle Nearest Green has got a liquor now. We invest in his liquor. Delicious. Premium whiskey. And it's the only CEO of a liquor company that is run by a black woman. Wow. Why? Because we had money to invest. Think about how many opportunities you leave on the table because there's no capital to invest. Not you, but other people you may know that doesn't have money to invest. Think about that real quick. So going forward, what side of the table would you like to be on? The signing side or the passing side? That's it. You got to be an investor. Here, you, now you're just printing money. Here's the crazy part. Let me ask you this question. $1.9 trillion just got splashed into America. Did they make the, do the dollar value stronger or weaker? Weaker. weaker? weaker, okay. So who's gonna catch this money? Who's gonna catch the $1.9 trillion just got splashed into the economy? Can anybody tell me how vast and big $1 trillion is? It's a, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Listen, uh, since the day Jesus was born, let's say you're one of the three kings. We three kings of Orient are. <laughs> right? You come to Jesus' birth. Okay? I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm just asking you to indulge me with the story. Okay? You, you go, uh, frankincense, incense, and myrrh. Right? And then Jesus says, okay, my dog. <laughs> For the rest of your life, spend a million dollars. Spend a million dollars. Spend a million dollars a day. Right? right? Since the day he was born, how much money would you have spent today? 20, 21. Right? Think about it. A million dollars a day every day for 2,021 years. How much money would you have spent? Turn it sideways. Do it. Well, yeah, do it. Do it. Yeah. Close. Close. Higher. So $1 million times 2,021 years. It's a lot of money. Yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> So in other words, it's, it's, it's in the billions, not the trillions. Here's another interesting fact. $10 trillion has, how much money do you think has ever been printed by the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, New York, 
San Francisco, Dallas, the, 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 the United States of America. They've printed out $10 trillion. How much money did they just print out last week? How about last year? Like 1.2. Yeah. 20% of all the money ever printed in America wow. was printed last year. So what did that do to our dollars? So if you're, guess what? If you're here, guess what just happened into your purchasing power? Guess what happens? You're like, 15 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour. Well, it's not worth 12 bucks an hour, even if they did get it, did get it passed. So what am I saying? You're gonna to continue to live more paycheck to paycheck. What about these folks? They keep printing money. So which side of the quadrant do you think the money's gonna flow more to? Exactly, because they got the bigger net. They're just looking for nine to five. So what we're encouraging America to think while we're doing these workshops is get America to think bigger. To get more entrepreneurs and business people thinking like entrepreneurs and business people on the south side. Why is it only the north side, folks? One thing, one thing I started noticing getting involved in the money business is that, you know, for example, I'd hang around a lot of Jewish, Jewish folks. Okay? You know what I noticed about them? Why? It's because they're more smarter? Yeah. Yeah, think about this real quick. The reason why one Jewish guy makes money, because he does business with his friend. And he does business with his friend. He does business with him. It doesn't happen to all Jewish families. There might be some, some, you know, some outcasts or, or people that aren't in the circle. But usually Jewish people do business with one another. Think about how, money, how much money circulates out of this community or in the community. Think about that. Does it go to locally to the stores and the business around here, or does it outsource to Amazon? Okay, so we want more local entrepreneurs. We want more local business people thinking like business. Okay, so here's one thing I recognize coming out of the hood. We just drove through the west side of Chicago, south side of Chicago, south side of Chicago to get here from, from Oak Brook. Do you think there's a difference in business in, in rich neighborhoods versus poor neighborhoods? Okay, what do you see in poor neighborhoods? Liquor store, <laughs> chicken, fish, huh? What type of business is though? Gas stations. Gas stations, check cashing stations. What else? Payday loans. Oh, payday, yeah. Corner stores. Cor yeah, corner stores, bodegas. Pawn shops. Foot locker. Foot locker. <laughs> By the way, if you don't think there's money in the hood, go to, the, go to, go to the, uh, Madison. West side of Chicago, right in the middle of the hood. K-Town, right? There's a lot of money in the hood. K. Notice none of y'all said these. What type of business do you see in the rich neighborhoods? Um, e e Boom. E Banks. E what else? Uh, right? Bro brokerages. Yeah. Right? What else? Yeah. Malls. What else? Like, like nice malls, not strip malls, right? Hotels. Definitely not chicken and fish. Motels over here? Hotels over here. Yeah. Okay? So I so saw in the hood, I can find a Ritz Carlton there? Or a Motel 5? Because <laughs> they can't afford six, right? <laughs> what else do you find in what other businesses do you find in rich neighborhoods? Real estate companies? Mortgage companies? Tax offices? Pen houses. Pen, right, what, what other businesses? Honestly, think about it. So is there, is there a vast difference with. Huh? Nice. Uh, um, uh, do you find Red Lobster in the hood, or do you find Joe's in a rich neighborhood? Right? Some of you guys don't even know what Joe's is, right? Okay. Have, you ever, have you ever heard of Michelin restaurants? Yeah. What, what's, what's, what's a Michelin? He's a server at Dave & Buster's. <laughs> what's a Michelin star rated? I, I didn't even know what a Michelin star rated restaurant until about three years ago. You never heard of it, right? Me? I thought Michelin tires? <laughs> I don't want to eat rubber tires. Michelin is like, you heard a five star, right? Michelin is above that. Wow. <laughs> Same I think so. Same yeah, okay. Well, we have Mama, Mama Cuisine there, right? Mm -hmm. Celebrity chef. Are you going to find any Michelin restaurants mm -hmm. in the hood, or do you find them in the rich neighborhoods? Rich Interesting, right? Why? Because there's a better recruitment and investment back into the rich communities. Where do you think the $1.9 trillion is going to go? If there's not the right businesses, and, and we said, well, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a problem. Well, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. So here's a cool part. Here's a cool part. If you learn this process of how, to, of how to make money, do you think anybody in America, based on entrepreneurship, 
based on the right type of capitalism, based on the right type of entrepreneurship, can they go from this side to this side? Mm -hmm. Can they? Can, a, can somebody at any given point make a decision to go from here to here? No doubt. Can they go from poor to rich? Mm -hmm. Good. You know, what, you know what I ask a lot of people? If you don't like the neighborhood you live in, why don't you move? <laughs> and then, if you really want to help the community, go back and do business over there. That's the way for you to get back. By the way, that's what I'm doing. I live way in, I, I, my backyard is the golf course. But what am I doing? I want to see the lake. Eat my, eat my, my, my partner thinks that uh, that was the beach. Uh, that's, that's, that's Lake Michigan, bro. It's, it's not the Atlantic. <laughs> but there's waves. <laughs> so how, 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 do we get, how do we go from poor to rich? We got to learn this side. We got to learn this. Here's a, here's a problem. Do they teach this in school? <clears throat> what do they teach you in school? How to be how to to here. Military. How to work for somebody else. How to work for the unions. Boom. System's rigged. You got to know that. So if you want to create generational wealth, you got, you, by the way, you got two choices. Do you want to create generational wealth or do you want to create generational poverty? Choice is yours. Well, I hope you've gotten a ton of notes from this episode because understanding that cash flow quadrant absolutely changed my life. Why? Because how you see things is how you do things. But before I let you go, please check out this video, why Elon Musk is leaving California and how the rich look at taxes and how it can help you save thousands in taxes and redirect it back into your pocket. And this other video I want you to check out is how I drive a Rolls Royce for 24 bucks a month. Yes, you heard that right. So I want you to take a peek of many more secrets of the rich and how I drive a Rolls Royce for $24 a month. So check out this video. So that being said, guys, please drop your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your follow-ups in the comments section below. Please share this with somebody that you know can be helped by watching this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. A YouTube channel dedicated to helping you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so you can become a first-generation cash flow millionaire. With that being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.